is good all the time, don't forget it It's really not defined by the blessings that I'm getting I'm really not concerned about the numbers, I don't stress it I'm really just concerned about the message Hey guys, it's another week, another episode right here on Diary of a Young Black Christian Woman And my name is Petunia, of course And I'm here to hold it down for you Alright, I'm here to give you my Christian perspective on literally every single thing That I've been wanting to talk about And every single thing that I do talk about And uh, yeah, I'm bringing it here to this platform So I'm, ho I'm hoping that you guys have been blessed by the content that I've been dropping thus far you know and it's only gonna get litter yeah from lit to litter to litest that is how we going baby from glory to glory thank you so much for tuning in if it is your first time tuning into diary of a young black christian woman welcome to it please make sure you share it with your friends so that they know that this is the wave that we are jumping on right now all year every day all day man this is how we are doing it thank you so much for all the love and the support once again i see you guys i see you guys so today i want to talk about a very interesting topic something that for me has always been something i've thought about quite a lot now there's a scripture in the bible that says do not be unequally yoked and i'll get into it a bit later you know but for me i was wondering you know when i first heard that scripture i thought why is it important for me not to be unequally yoked now today i want to just share a couple of scriptures and just share my perspective on it all now when i was growing up you know i, I would i would look around at my friends relationships obviously you know uh, when we were younger so a lot of people got into relationships quite early on in life you know and i was just looking around at these relationships and i was like no man mm -mm. Nah, 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 nah. some of this is just not for me you know i was not okay with the standard of relationships and the standard of of dating around me you know nothing around me really inspired me and so i didn't buy into it so i didn't get into relationships until a bit later on uh, in my life in my high when i was in high school you know and it was simply because i was not willing to get into something just for the sake of jay i wanted to get into something that i knew that i fully um believed in the success of it and something that i wasn't just copying and pasting from somewhere else but i really knew that i had to find and journey on finding a new definition to this whole love thing and really find a new way of doing relationships and i committed myself to that so here i am today man and i'll say that okay shop grand obviously you know i'm single right now but you know like they say you know like the coach the coach knows the game better than the player, but the coach is sitting there on the bench telling the player how to do the thing. You understand? I was like, so I'm not on the field, you know, but I, I definitely know a lot about dating. And I feel like for me, it's just that people aren't really people aren't really receiving the wisdom of relationships right now. And so for me, it's like uh, if I can't have the real thing, it's fine. Get right. You know, so um, I want to start by reading the scripture right here. Um, and it is from Genesis 11, right? Genesis 11 verses um, 6 and this is a, a famous scripture uh, You probably know it. It is about the Tower of Babel I'm gonna read and just so so it's about these people that were united and that decided to build a tower that reached heaven so um, so um, let, So they said basically let me start from verses 4 then they said, come let us build a great city for ourselves with a tower that reaches into the sky. This will make us famous and keep us from being scattered all over the world. Cool, sharp grin. Then um, verses 5 says, but the Lord came down to look at the city and the, tower of the the, and the tower the people were building. Look, he said, the people are united and they all speak the same language. After this, nothing they set out to do will be impossible for them. They were united. They spoke one language. Nothing they set out to do will be impossible for them. Then God decided, let's confuse the people with different languages. Then they won't be able to understand each other. Do you get that? Do you see the power of unity? The power of the same language, same mind, same goal. It gets you further. And when you guys are, 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 are basically... There is no unity. There's this unity. When there's discord in the and we don't have a, a common goal, a common purpose, that is how we will not be able to achieve anything. Cool. Let me share a little story with y'all real quick. You know, so when I was younger, I remember um, as I was getting older, obviously, like I'm in high school now, you know, and I'm starting to consider, okay, getting into relationships. So one of my close friends started asking me, you know, friend, what is... 
what is your type you know i just i want to know what is your type and so obviously like peer pressure tells us that we have to have a certain type when it comes to relationships so you know i started thinking about it that hmm what is my type then what is my type what is my type what is my type so then the next day i came to her came to this conclusion that you know what show me sit down right here this is what i want number one you must be taller than me even if it's just yeah a little you know it's like this much but he must be taller than me sharp i was really into the fade cut around that time so i was like definitely he has to have a fade come on come on come on come on come on and i was like yeah friend like you must have a certain walk you know till this day you know i really notice um like when 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 a man just passes by i i, I i'm just drawn to the walk every single time i can't describe it i can't explain it i can't draw the picture but i'm telling you when i see a walk i know that is the like nine walk you understand what i'm saying so i was definitely into a specific kind of walk you know not calling I just had a lot of specifications so a specific walk is what I was going for you know and I knew that I would know the walk once I see it I want him to be a bit you know fat you know have broad shoulders obviously you know because that I wanted to feel like someone is holding me you know um and so I realized that man I'm describing the external package that's all I'm doing right now so obviously I'm holding there I'm like no he must go to church you understand he must go to church um and that was it case closed you know so then as i went on in fact actually my first boyfriend was exactly that he was the perfect external package like he was he was it he was the walk he was in in he was everything and then i realized i mean it was my first relationship obviously so it was exciting but then i realized no man hmm there's something there's something more that i want you understand they're, they're like that thing man i want it there's something missing and then i realized that what i want what i didn't really take note of what i didn't really prioritize was the internal content you understand have you ever bought something that looked good on the outside like it looked come on come on like i'm telling you the packaging was everything the way things were worded you know everything was just amazing and then you open that thing and you start eating the contents of it and you're just like no man mm -mm. this isn't as good as it looks Th this right here mm -mm. no 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 mm -mm. so all you can do with packaging is frame it but the content is what will leave a lasting impression on you. You cannot lie about the content of a package. You cannot. It is what it is. You understand? So a lot of people overlooked one, overlook one of the most important things. I like how Pastor Ty Chibbert says. He says, you know what, Nem? Having a person who is just beautiful, Nem, is, is like having, you know, it's it, like basically take a cake and icing. A person who's just beautiful and all of that all these superficial things they are the icing but the cake is the real content of those things the cake are the real things the values the character that this person brings so the problem is you cannot you can eat icing sharp you can eat icing sharp but you're gonna get sick eventually but you can have cake without the icing but you cannot you cannot have icing without the cake you understand what I'm saying so in my world I want both <laughs> I want both but you must understand that your priority should be in the cake you understand it should be in the character that the person brings the value the purpose which is what I'm gonna get into right now I've taken a lot of time but basically let's get into the next part of this all right so I want to read the scripture I was talking about the famous scripture and it is from second uh, Corinthians uh, it is from chapter 6 verses 14 and it reads don't team up with those who are unbelievers How can righteousness be partner with wickedness? How can light live with darkness? What harmony can there be between Christ and the devil? How can a believer be a partner with an unbeliever and what union can there be between God's temple and idols? For we are the temple of the living God as God said I will live them I will live with them and I will walk among them and I will be their God and they will be my my people therefore come out from among unbelievers and and separate yourselves from them says the lord don't touch their filthy filthy things they are filthy things and i will welcome you and i'll be your father and you'll be my sons and daughters says the lord god almighty i want to read it right now in the english standard version in my little pocket bible 
all right so i'm just gonna have to zoom in a bit with my eyes here <laughs> because uh it's yeah it's a lot so 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 verses um chapter six rather uh, verses 14 says do not be unequally yoked with believe with unbelievers but what partnership has righteousness with lawlessness or what fellowship has light with darkness what accord has Christ with Bilal or what portion does a believer share with an unbeliever what agreement has the temple of God with idols for we are the temple of the living God as God said I will make my dwelling among them and I will walk among them and I will be their God and they shall be my people therefore go out from their midst and be separate from them says the Lord and touch no unclean thing then I will welcome you and I will be a father to you and you shall be my sons and daughters and says the almighty the Lord almighty hallelujah amen look this this part of scripture is is, is 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 something very important it's kind of i think one of the the few um relationship advice that you get from the bible you understand what i'm saying so a, a lot of it god gives it to us as wisdom you know i was talking to someone and i said man when you know god when you know god's word you know god when you know god you know his will when you know his will you know what he wants in your life you understand what I'm saying? There are certain things that the Bible doesn't explicitly talk about. But using the wisdom that you get from knowing God's word, knowing God, knowing his will, you will know how God wants us to conduct certain things. Anyways, you think about people in the Bible like both Solomon. You think about people like Samson who, who, married, who married people who, had, who, who worshipped other, other gods. You understand and what that did eventually they ended up worshiping their gods and that is why initially god said you know to the early 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 people that don't marry the certain tribe don't marry these certain people because they will lead you away those people what happens is those people end up defiling the house you know by bringing in their other their other gods into the house and what happens is eventually it says that they were taken away by their gods and they started serving their gods samson i mean solomon ended up serving the gods that his wives we're serving you understand and and that is the main thing i feel like for me the main thing is like you need to you need you need to love god you need to fear god you need to be serving god because let me tell you something someone who does not love god someone who does not fear god is incapable of loving you period how can you say you love me when the power and the example of love which is jesus christ you don't believe in when you don't believe in the God who has shown unconditional love, the God who is love, how can you say you love me? What kind of love? Uh, whoa, divine love for me. This this love that you're talking about. What kind of love is it if it's not if it's not the Father? If it's not from the Father, if it's not inspired by the Father, if, Father, if God is not the source of it, that's some counterfeit love. And the thing is, what is counterfeit is very close. It resembles the real thing. That is how a lot of people get confused. What is counterfeit? It resembles the real thing. And if you don't look again, you might think, no, 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 If you come closer, I want to no, man, the tick is a bit skew. I don't know, no, no, this can't be night, right, yeah? But a lot of us don't want to look again. The Bible says that there's a road that looks, that looks right. But look again, for it leads to destruction. Look again. A lot of us, we just like falling. We just like falling. Whether we are falling into 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 a into into a liar's bed whether we're falling into a cheater's bed we don't care we just want to fall and and we need to control our emotions the bible says that god has given us a spirit of self-control we need to start learning to control our emotions we can't just say Hore, Mara, i can't i can't i can't choose who i love uh, uh you can you can choose who you love i'm telling you now you can choose who you love and i'll talk about that in another episode but you can choose who you love you can and this is what it's saying right here. Do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. So now I learned, you know, that unequally yoked basically is having different burdens. More life thing, we all have different things that basically drive us as human beings. We have different things that we want to do. Different things that we, 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 we basically, we characterize as living. A lot of people want to help the poor. A lot of people want to be a billionaire. You know, the world's first what what billionaire. A lot of people have different things, different burdens that they have upon their lives. And so the problem comes when you both are going in different directions. He wants to be a billionaire. You want to... What are totally different views? Um, okay, for example, you want to build a church and um, he just wants to make money. Now, the problem with that is... He'll, where people do not have 
respect or honor for a thing they will probably abuse or misuse it what will happen is now because you guys are together he'll think okay the church is a great way to make money yeah no let's do the church so he'll only be focused on the money aspect of the church while you are looking at the soul aspect of the church at the fruitfulness of the church he'll be looking at something else and that is how the discord is sold that is just a, a basically that is like a, a surface level um example but you need to understand what i'm getting with where i'm going with this uh, if your destinations are not the same then where are we going in fact let me read for you a scripture right here in amos i bought, don't tell me i closed it oh my goodness no 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 guys oh my goodness no uh yes here we go amos th amos 3 verses 3 says can two people walk together without agreeing on the destination i like how my pastor once said no man look if we say we are going to cape town ne? we are going to cape town matter if one person says i'm going to cape town and like the other one is like no i'm going to northwest we're not going to use the same route we're not going to go the same way. We're not going to the same destination. We need to have a common goal and purpose. We need to have the same destination in mind. And that is how we can walk together. Can two people walk together without agreeing on the destination? You can't. So that is why it's so important that we look even into our relationships. Listen, guys. A lot of people have been destroyed by their poor choice in a partner. Millions of people. Billions of people in the times of the bible and even now are, are totally going on the path of destruction because of their choice in a partner i want to bring it to you right now you see how people are losing their lives because of their choice in a partner and i'm not saying it's an excuse i'm not i'm not saying at all that they are to blame but i'm just saying that can you see how your choice in a partner is so important Besides what they can do to you physically, even what they can do to you spiritually. I like how someone said, you know what, Nem? A lot of people don't understand that getting into the wrong relationship will, reach, will lead you straight into sin. You get into a marriage right now and what you're doing is you, you're building um, hatred, you're building bitterness for your husband, for your wife, you know, and there you are sinning already. Now you are starting, you're starting to think other things. Remember I said that murder doesn't actually just mean holding a gun to someone's head and, and pulling the trigger. Murdering is, is through hatred, through jealousy, through unforgiveness. That is how we murder people, you know. And a lot of people are in a relationship so, so miserable in their marriage, so miserable in their relationship because they failed to look again. Guys, you will not die from waiting. You will not die. In fact, the Bible says you will receive strength from waiting. A lot of us look at waiting as depriving ourselves. We look at waiting as a way of delaying our progress we look at waiting as a way of, of 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 not getting us anyway when god says that waiting will increase our strength waiting will not make you weak waiting will make you stronger waking will not make you, waiting will not make you weak it will make you even more sober i have I, I think about myself even this year this year when i was attracted to someone i was so attracted to that person like i literally built sand castles in my mind i literally look we had a wedding we had kids in my mind you know it was already done but as i just continued you know just taking my time i was like no i'm not gonna act harsh uh, irrationally i'm not gonna do anything i'm just gonna chill i'm gonna chill with it and then when i started man observing certain things about god started revealing red flags basically boop red flag boop red flag boop red flag and i'm like yeah god thank you i don't know how many times i've been saved from bad relationships from just waiting just waiting and I'm trusting I'm telling you right now I trust you me God will not fail in showing you the red flags he will always show you the red flags you understand but there are people who are just so oblivious who do not want to see the red flags no 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 I don't want to see his true colors it's fine lie to me please 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 lie to me and that's what people live in you understand what I'm saying? They always say when a person shows you their true colors, honey, believe them. Believe them, sweetie. So, yeah. Anyways, I want to read another scripture right here. 
Um, and it is from First Corinthians. Mm. I don't even. Okay, yeah. First Corinthians, um, chapter fifteen, verses thirty-three. First Corinthians chapter 15 verse 33 it says don't be fooled by those who say such things for bad company corrupts good character Ooh, wrong, guys bad company corrupts good character your friendships your associations even your partner bad company corrupts good character listen here remember the other scripture that I shared in the other episode where I said in the, where the Bible says keep watch lest you fall don't think you are too strong guys don't guys I feel like that that's been one of the the biggest lessons I've learned in relationships like I'm not strong like I'm weak like I'm weak get easy 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 don't blind that is me you know so I really have just given it to God say, oh God you know what I give this to you and it is an understanding that God is also concerned about your relational life. A lot of people just think that God is concerned about the spiritual life. And he's not concerned really about our lives on earth and the other aspects of our being. But you need to understand that all of these things contribute. The Bible says um, in Timothy, Paul is saying, I, I, I wish you have good, I, I, I hope that your whoa, yeah, I hope that just your, your physical body is prospering just as your spiritual body is. So our spiritual body affects our physical body and our physical body affects our spiritual body. They, they affect each other. It's almost like understanding the fact that if you are not, if you're not healthy physically, your prayer life will be affected. You know, your serving will be affected because I mean, if you're always sick, you can't be in church serving. If you're always sick, you can't. the short breath. Ooh, couldn't even prayer will just be a stretch for you. You know what I'm saying? Prayer will be impossible for you, you know? So you need to understand that the two affect each other. You need to understand that your relational life. You look at people who have had bad relationships. They just don't believe in love. And so when you come and say God is love, they immediately associate that word love with heartache. They associate it with disappointment. You understand? That is why you need to be so careful about who you allow into your life, especially when it comes to your romantic partners. Because soul ties are real. Soul ties are real. And I'll get into that in the other in, in, in another episode. Listen here, I want to tell you about Samson. Samson was a powerful man. You understand? God gave him this long hair, and the command was that he should never cut his hair. His strength was it was in his hair. Samson was just, you know, he was a good man. No, Mara, Samson had an eye, man. An eye for woman, you understand? And that was his downfall. Samson Shab Grand, he, got from, he came from a bad relationship. He ended up going to the specific city, you know, whatnot, whatnot. And in that city, he met this woman named Delilah. Delizzi! Del, 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 del. Ah, she messed up his life. So Delilah was not an Israelite. Samson was an Israelite, right? And the command was that they are not meant to intermarry. But at that point in time, ah, Morina Kumsa Samson, ah, intermarrying was a normal thing. So anyways, he saw this girl, you know, and they hit it off, you know? And so the problem with Delilah was that she loved money. Ah, Delilah loved money. So Delilah basically sold, uh, she basically, basically um, 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 betrayed Samson for a check. Homegirl secured the bag, you know, she was just securing the bag. So she betrayed Samson for the bag. And so the Philistines came and said, you know what, please in, seduce Samson, you know, so that he can tell you where his strength lies, so that we can basically disarm him of that strength. And Jalizi went to work. Samson was on her lap, Sam, baby, tell me, tell me, tell me, where do you get all your strength from? And Two times Samson lied to her. But he kept coming back to her. So it means that Samson knew that this woman is not, I can't trust this woman. But he kept coming back to her. Because they were doing bad ministry. These people weren't married, but they were engaging in sexual relations. And that is where the soul tie was formed, which I'll talk about in another episode. But, so Delizzi had him right with, right, she had him wrapped around her finger. Listen here. And so, eventually Samson cracked and he told her, Delilah literally sacrificed, she literally betrayed him for the bag. 
And the sad thing is now, she ended up cutting his hair. And he woke up the next day and all his strength was gone. And guess what? Delilah was gone. She left with the bag. She was gone. You know, and now Samson was here, no strength. And he was totally disarmed. You know, and all the things that God was doing was literally put on pause for that moment. So you need to understand that when you don't choose the right partner, they will expose you to attack. You will be prone to attack from external forces because of the person whom you have chosen as a partner. And now this is going deep. I'm referring obviously to marriage. Mina, I don't talk about relationships without marriage inside. Marriage is, marriage is, marriage is the goal, you know? So you need to understand that it is so important. The person that you choose, guys. Yo, this person can either, can either propel and you know, add to the purpose that God has called you to, or this person can lead you totally away from it. You know, they always say, um, in my relationship, lead me to God, don't lead me away from God. Your relationship is meant to draw you closer to God, and through drawing close to God, you draw close to each other. The Bible says that what God has put together, let no man separate. So God is committed to ensuring that what he has joined, what he has put together, that no man will be able to separate. The problem is a lot of marriages out there were not put together by God. They were not put together by God. No, 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 no. They were put together by people's own selfish desires, by people's uh, 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 or certain, you know, uh, like I said, it, by their type. By the, this, 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 this whole thought, this whole um, belief in having a type. That is what that relationship was put together by. Superficial things. And you must know. The Bible says we don't look unto those things which are seen. Because the things which we see are temporary. We look to those things which are not seen. Because the things that are not seen, those are things that are eternal. But home, guys, if that didn't hit you, I'm sorry. No, I don't know. No, 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 I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. So guys, understand that God is very concerned. He wants to be part of even your relational life. He wants to be part of who you choose as your next partner. He wants to be in your bagels. He wants to be right at the center of the, that, you know. But we really need to be intentional in inviting him in. People, I, I heard this powerful thing that, look, we, like God, we are the temple. We are a house. A lot of us only want to invite God to a specific part of the house. When God wants access to every single room in the house, let's give him every, let's give him, let's let him be God. Let's let him be Lord over our lives. Meaning that he takes full control of every single part of our lives, even the partners that we get to be with. Look, I have given it all to God. Like I, I've tried, I've used my own standards, I've I've had my types, and the type stacker didn't work out for me. There is so much more to a relationship than just what you guys offer each other physically. There's the mental aspect, there's a the spiritual aspect, there's the emotional aspect. And if you want the holistic package, you need to trust in God. Because God is the one, the only one who can discern a man's heart. That is what the Bible says. We can't. We just trust in what people say and what they do. We rely on that. But God really examines a man's motives. And that is why we need to give it to God. That is why, if you didn't know why, you must put this in God's hands. It's because of that. God is the only one who knows a man's heart. Do you understand? So yeah, guys, I'm, I'm going to leave it right there. There's obviously so much more I can say about it. But that's how, where I'm going to leave it right now. Do not be unequally yoked. Do not. Be equally yoked. Have the same burden. You must desire to be with someone who, who has... The same vision as you. Someone who will support you in your vision. And someone who you can support in theirs. Both of you must have a common purpose and goal. And a common goal in mind. You must have a common goal in mind. Which is serving God. And everything you do. Is just the means to that end. You must have the same destination back home. You must have the same destination in mind. Because then you guys will be able to carry each other. You'll be able to lift each other up where the other is inadequate. You'll be able to add unto them. Where the other is in need of encouragement, you'll be able to do that. But if you don't fully believe in the vision that a person, that God has put in a person's life, if you don't have the same destination, you cannot contribute, if, you cannot effectively communicate, uh, contribute. Oh, You cannot effectively contribute to them getting to where they need to get to. You understand? Like relationships are all about purpose, guys. Sharp grand, the love, the affection is great. But purpose, 
I'm telling you, purpose will be there even when you wake up and you're just like, I don't love this person anymore. Purpose will be there when you wake up and you're just like, I don't trust this person anymore. Purpose will be there when you wake up and you're just like, oh, she's not what I thought she would be. She, couldn't, you're not a morning. When when you see that the person is not a morning person physically, they are just not a morning person. <laughs> you know, when you wake up next to them and you're just like, ah, dude, you're not so cute in the morning, hey? You know, purpose will be there. Purpose will remain through it all. Purpose will keep you together. Purpose will keep you guys grounded. Purpose will give you guys a goal in your relationship. I'm done with doing relationships just for the sake of passing time or just because I like you. Look, I've liked a lot of people in my life. And that is just not enough for me anymore. We need to have a common goal, a common purpose, a common destination. Can two people work together unless they have a clear on the destination? No, you cannot. Hey guys, my name is Petrinia. Thank you so much for tuning in to Diary of a Young Black Christian Woman. Please make sure that you like, you comment, and you subscribe. And also click on the notification bell so that whenever I post, you get a notification automatically. And also guys, please share so that we can get more people here. The more, the merrier, of course. And in your own time, please also go out to Facebook and like my page, Diary of a Young Black Christian Woman. Thank you so much guys. God bless. Bye. God is good all the time, don't forget it It's really not defined by the blessings, they don't get it I'm really not concerned about the